Would you believe me if I told you that this wasn't everything I read last month? Would you believe me if I told you there were 10 more books that I don't have physical copies for? Anyway, hi, hello, and welcome everybody to my March reading wrap up. For now, grab yourself something to drink, and I think we'll just start and get right into all of these books because there are a lot, a whole lot. Let's go. Let me grab my reading journal. I have my ratings of all the books in here. This month's theme, by the way, was Belladonna. I'm, I'm just, I'm a little obsessed with that book. I still haven't read the second one. I maybe should do this this month. I, I have the time, okay? All of these are my personal opinions. And I am aware that other people loved these books, maybe, that I didn't like, and other people hated books that I like. And that's fine. I don't mind. Please tell me your opinions on any of these books if you read them. I would be very interested in seeing those. Also, please tell me your favorites of this month so that I can maybe read them in the future. We're getting straight into this. I'm gonna section this into three big parts, okay? We're gonna go from low to the top. Let's just get started because I've been talking for way too long again. I always do this. Why do I do this so much? I don't know. I literally do not know. But we'll get started. Let's start with the first and worst book of the month, in my personal opinion. If you had been with me, I had a very hard time. This is my only DNF of the month. I read until like halfway and then I decided that this just wasn't the book for me. Doesn't mean that it's not gonna be the book for you. So essentially what we have here is a teenage romance about two friends or like ex-friends in high school. And it's told out of her perspective and it's just kind of her explaining her high school and, and suddenly her realizing that she wants to be with her childhood best friend, but also realizing that maybe it's too late for that. For me, it was just very, very detached. I wasn't interested in the storyline. I didn't like her as a character. We just didn't connect. So I was just overall not really a fan of the book. And I think it's sad, but it's also kind of like what happened. I'm gonna move on because I don't want to bash this book because I'm pretty sure that people will enjoy it. I just struggled. Next up we have a classic, okay? Dune. I actually like marked it in my journal as read a classic by the way because I feel like this deserves to be named a classic. Now if you don't know what Dune is, the movie's great. <laughs> I had my struggles with this. I read this in a day which I would not recommend. The first two parts of this were great and then the ending just ruined the entire book for me. It was so boring. The whole book I was hoping to get a little more like emotionally connected to the characters which that just isn't this kind of book. The book is extremely plot-based. There's no emotions going on. That's not what the book is about, but that's what I enjoy in books. So I would say this book wasn't for me. It's a good book, but it just wasn't the perfect book for me. If you're interested in seeing me struggle, I made a whole reading vlog on just this book where I talk a lot about it. Let's move on from this. So the next book that I read was a Kindle one. This is on Kindle Limited. The Worst Wedding Date. I had an all right time with this. I read it to 2.5 stars. It's kind of like a childhood crush romance. So she's supposed to babysit the groom's brother at the wedding of her best friend. I think that's the plot. And he's like her childhood crush and she's his childhood crush. In general, we know where this is going. We know where this is headed. I just didn't have as much fun reading it as I had hoped I would. There were some things that I really, really didn't enjoy about this. Like for one, he made this huge secret of his job when it shouldn't have to be because this whole book is about accepting who you are. And it, that just made me a little angry. Also, I just didn't really connect to the book. I thought it was very like predictable and boring. And usually I like predictable and boring, but this month I had an issue with predictable and boring. Moving on to the next book, which I also had an issue with predictable and boring, is Seven Years Slip by Ashley Poston. I went into this with such high hopes because The Dead Romantics is a great book and I loved it. And then I started reading this and I was like, no. I am severely hoping this book is just kind of like a slip up and I just personally didn't enjoy it. It's not that it's written in a bad way. I, I, I had no issue with the writing. I had an issue with the plot, with the characters. I didn't feel very immersed into the story. So the seven year slip is about a woman who lives in her apartment and her apartment is kind of magical. And there's like this guy that sometimes appears at her apartment. And as it turns out, this guy lives seven years in the past and she doesn't know what's going on, he doesn't know what's going on, but this is kind of like their romance. It's cute and all. It's an all right book. I was just a little disappointed because I was expecting it to be great when it wasn't. Like, I was expecting here and I got here. 
Sure, there is also here, but it could have been here, but it wasn't, right? And with that, we're kind of moving into the mid-tier books territory. There weren't many books that I didn't like at all. Like, my general rating for this month was 3.5, which I think describes the month pretty well. So in the mid-tier, we have this series. This is the Team Zulu series. I think that's what they're called. I'm not sure. Anyway, I read book two and three of that series by Julie Weaver. So we kind of have an overprotective alpha male neighbor hacker guy and her. That's the plot of the book. You can already tell what the plot of the book is. This was fine. This was all right. It wasn't anything brilliant, but it was a good time. And that's why we're here, right? So yeah, I'm just gonna move on to the third book in that series. I like this one a little bit better, but also I generally don't remember either of these books and I had to look both of them up so that should already tell you a lot about these books. So with this one I was liking it a little more. It was also a little weird. Our male main character makes a horrible decision at the beginning. He makes a decision to steal a car with his brother because they kind of have a Robin Hood thing going on where they steal from the rich and they are horrible thieves because they steal the car with a person in it because she's trying to get out because she's in this relationship with this guy that she hates. So she wants to get away and then they accidentally kidnap her and they want to return her but she doesn't want to be returned. So that's kind of where we are. I kind of liked it, I also kind of didn't. She was very much this little damsel in distress. She was however very feisty so I enjoyed that. It was overall a good story. I think I read this a 3.5. I'm just, overall, this was all right. It was good. It just wasn't groundbreaking. Next up, just because I want to get all the Kindle books out of the way, Pretty Rings and Broken Things. I like this. This is, in my opinion, I think the only, only billionaire romance ever where they have great communication skills. The communication between these two is so good. They actually talk about their issues. That's all I remember of this book, by the way. It's just they talk about their issues. We kind of have a marriage of convenience going on. So in general, cute romance, cute everything was good. I enjoyed it, okay? I, I enjoyed this book. What you should probably also know about this is that there is a 10-year age gap. I know that some people don't enjoy age gap romances, so I'm just gonna put it here for those of you who don't enjoy those. And now moving on to the next one, which is this one. This is Lady Avery and the False Butler. Let me explain a little bit about this book because you might need context. I might need context. Why am I reading this? Um, because I love Regency era books, okay? Give me anything Regency era and I will just inhale the fumes of these books. This is a series of books. I read book one, two, three, and this is book four. They're not connected. Like, none of these books are in any way connected. You can read them however you want. So we have this butler and she's kind of like starting something with the butler, but we also know that the butler is... like there's something off about the butler. And Lady Avery, who is our main character, she's super, super into like crime. It's a good book. It's a fun book. I had a great time reading this, but I also love these kind of books. Like, the Regency romances. I'm just a sucker for these, okay? I am just a sucker for them. And that is it for the mid-tier Kindle books. So let's move on to the mid-tier actual books that I have here. We have The Bodyguard by Catherine Center. This is a spice-free romance. I think it's great to have an adult romance that is spice-free because usually they're just YA romances that are. This was fun. This was good. This was cute. We have this guy, he's an actor, he's a very famous actor, and he has a stalker. But also his mom's in the hospital, so he needs a bodyguard who's kind of like discreet. So what's the best plan here? You get this girl, this cute little bodyguard girl, and you put her with him and they pretend to be dating so that his family doesn't realize that he might be in danger because he has a stalker. This already sounds like a great concept of a book, and it actually was. This was fun, this was cutesy, I loved the characters together, they were so good together. It was overall just a good time, a great time, and I enjoyed it. So, yeah, this was fun. This book was fun. Sticking with the fun, cutesy romance books, we have The Love Wager by Lynn Painter. Overall, this is like the typical classic romance story that you read about, that you watch movies about. So in this case, you have two people who are trying to find love, okay? They had a one night stand and now they're trying to find love and they're doing this on a dating app and they're going on constant dates and afterwards they're like trying to compare their dates and kind of like doing things together and 
we already know that they're gonna fall in love during this, okay? We already know that and we're here for it. That's why we read romance books, because they're so predictable. That's just it. And this is a cute example of one. I had a great time with this. This was fun. This was good. It was not groundbreakingly good, but it was good, cute, fun. All the good stuff, okay? All the good stuff. Now moving on to a graphic novel. We have The Third Lore Olympus. I read this because in my TBR video this month, I said I was gonna read a graphic novel, and this was the graphic novel. I like the Lore Olympus graphic novels. I'm not sure if I'm gonna continue reading them, just because for the fact that I read this entire thing in like 30 minutes, it's a little kind of disappointing almost, because there's not a lot that's happening. There's not a lot of story in each of these. It's a lot of work to draw these, but there was just like, it's very little story. Just because it's a graphic novel, that's how they work. But yeah, overall, good, fun, I like these. This is cute. These are Hades and Persephone kind of modernized stories. What I don't like so much about these is that Persephone is like super, super, super innocent and naive. And I don't really enjoy that as much, but still good. Next up, we have a book that I had very high hopes for, but it kind of let me down a bit because I didn't do my research properly. This is on me, by the way. I really, really enjoyed The Scarlet Veil. What I didn't realize is that the same author also wrote the Serpent and Dove series. Now, I read Serpent and Dove. I also read the second book, but I didn't read Gods and Monsters, which is the third book. Did this spoil me for the ending of Gods and Monsters? Absolutely it did. Yes, because it's just after that book. It's one of the characters that's in those books is the main character in this book. So if you do plan on reading this, maybe you should read Serpent and Dove first, or maybe you just shouldn't read Serpent and Dove at all. I'm not sure I'm ever gonna continue reading Serpent and Dove just because I didn't enjoy the second book of that. I, however, really did enjoy this one. It was good, it was fun. As far as I know, it's also like a standalone. It's vampires on a, on a like a vampire island. It was a good book. It was fun. It was just, it was classic vampires, okay? And I really, really enjoyed it. All right, and the last book that made it into my mid-tier book stack is Powerless by Lauren Roberts. And I so wanted to enjoy this book because I know that a lot of people out there loved this. I just found it very hard. Now this is also in one of my reading vlogs. A lot of these are. But for this book, I just, I loved Kai. I thought Kai was an incredibly well-written character. I actually enjoyed most of the characters, okay? That was my issue. My issue was that the plot was just, it for me, the plot felt like it was a complete mashup of Red Queen and The Hunger Games. And because it was so similar in plot to Red Queen, I already knew what was gonna happen. I didn't enjoy myself. It felt like I was just reading that again. And Red Queen is one of my all-time favorite books, so that's not a bad thing in general. It's just because it was so similar, I just couldn't find myself enjoying this book because it just felt too similar for me. And I hated that and loved it at the same time. So in general, I rated this a three stars because I really had a good time. I was just at always, always trying to find similarities to Red Queen and going through my head like, that's so similar, that's so similar. I just didn't really have the best time. I really didn't. And I was so sad about it because I really wanted to have the best time, but I wasn't having the best time. So yeah. It wasn't my favorite of the month, but I understand how people enjoyed, especially if people haven't read The Red Queen. However, if you enjoyed this and you haven't read The Red Queen series, maybe you should because it's very similar. And if you enjoyed it, maybe you enjoyed The Red Queen as well. That is a complete series, okay? I'm gonna say it again and again because I love that series so much. So, that was Powerless. And now we're moving on to my top tier books. These are all like either three and a half stars at the very least or like four, four and a half, five stars. We're gonna start with a book that I was not expecting to enjoy this much. I wasn't expecting to have a great time with this book and I was having a great time with this book, okay? I don't know how this happened, but it was so, so good. I'm talking about Den of Vipers. I don't know. I was expecting it to be all, all right, but it wasn't. I was so loving it. So if you don't know, Den of Vipers is a 
reverse harem love story where she is kidnapped by these four guys and she's supposed to be unalived by them, okay? That's their that's their job. But for some reason, they all like kind of like her at the beginning. And so she just starts a relationship with each of the guys. I was expecting the one thing that I absolutely hate and that I cannot read in dark romances and that is non-consensual stuff. I'm, I'm not here for that shit, okay? I just don't like it. But in this book, it was consensual. And that's all we need, okay? As long as it's consensual, everything is fine. And in this case, it was. And I was happy with that. It was very dark. It was very like, you know, I'm gonna like slit open your skin while doing other things to you. But it was at the same time like, I want you to do that to me. So it was all right, it was fine. And I had a great time reading this. I especially like enjoy this about like the reverse harem books is that you have multiple love stories going on at the same time. And you have multiple characters that you can love just as much as any other. And it's just, it's great, it's good. It's like you get four romances for the price of one romance. It's so much fun. And now we're moving on to the last Kindle book. This is a series that I had never heard of before. I don't know why I never heard of it. We're here with Elsie Silver again. I'm not gonna go through each of these books individually just because these are small town cowboy romances. If you've read the Chestnut Spring series, this is the series that predates those, okay? This is her first series and it's great and it's fun and it's such an entertaining good time that I'm pretty sure you're gonna love these as well. This is just small town romance and we're here for those. I can only encourage you to read those. And now let's move to my favorites of the month because that's where we're at. So we're starting with a book that I actually adored. They both die at the end. Will this wreck your soul and break your heart? Absolutely it will, yes. Will you cry? Yes, I could almost guarantee you that you will cry. I loved it though. I loved having my heart broken by this book. It was great. So the main characters live in a world where you get a call on the day that you die, at midnight you get a call that you're gonna die this day. So the two main characters decide to go on an app and find a friend for the last day of their lives. And they just live through all their like friendship and romance that a lifetime could give you in a single day. And it's so heartbreaking, but it's so good and definitely worth checking out. I am obsessed with this book. It's just so good, so cute. <laughs> loved it. Then next, we have The Midnight Library. I wasn't expecting to enjoy this book as much as I did, and then I absolutely loved it. So we have mental health. So, trigger warning. Mental health, mental health, mental health, okay? This is a lot about depression and thoughts of taking your own life and actually taking your own life. So essentially we have the main character who analyzes herself and is then brought to the Midnight Library where she gets the chance to look at all of her regrets and then choose to undo regrets and live those lives that she could have lived if she made different choices. And I loved it. I had a very, very good time reading this book. I like the characters and I just enjoyed the writing. This was fun. This was a good book. I can encourage you to read this. It's good. And next we're going to talk about a series because I feel like I can't talk about One Dark Window without mentioning Two Twisted Crowns. So I'm gonna put them this way because One Dark Window is the first book and then this one is the second book, although I enjoyed the second book a little more. So we have a dark fantasy. They're really good. I had a very, very good time. I enjoyed them. We have a world where some kids were infected by some sort of plague and some sort of fever sickness and those kids then have a kind of magic. And this magic is mostly like very dark and it leads to the child slowly dying, essentially. So they're slowly like getting darker and sucked into this sickness even more. And in this world, we have magical playing cards. And each of these magical playing cards has like a certain ability. And our main character has actually absorbed one of these playing cards into herself. And she has this character in her head that's kind of like this monster. And this monster can save her in her head, but it can also like break her because this monster is her very own sickness. And this series, let me tell you, this series is great. This love interest in this series is great. We have, of course, a romanticy. It's just overall really, really good. And I enjoyed the second book even more, which says something about the series. The second book is even better than the first one. What? How is that possible? I don't know, but it is. And with that, we're already at the last book that we're gonna talk about. And that is my absolute favorite book. That is, this is a six star book, by the way. This is the perfection itself. We have As Long As The Lemon Trees Grow by, let me try this, okay? Sulfa Kato? I'm sorry. 
<laughs> I'm really trying, okay? I was struggling so much with the names of the characters in this book. Essentially, this is a love story set during the Syrian Revolution. Now, if your history is not very good, that was like 2012-13 where this book is set, like, time-wise, just so that you know. We're not in the past in the past, we're just, like, 10 years in the past. So, Syrian Revolution. We have this main character, Salama, and her brother married her best friend a year ago. But now that the revolution is going, a lot of the males are imprisoned and fighting in the civil war. And so she has decided to grab her best friend and flee the country because her best friend is super pregnant and she just, she wants to leave the country. But then she meets this guy in the street and turns out he wants to stay in Syria, but they kind of like fall in love a little bit. And this is like their romance, but it's also like their love story to Syria, to their home country. And it showcases beautifully that you don't actually want to leave your country behind, but sometimes you have to for the sake of your own safety and I thought this book was so so beautiful I cried my little heart out because I just I was devastated by this okay but it was such a good book such a cute book I loved that this romance was there but I also loved that like all the friendships in this all the little relationships all the tiny little bits I loved the writing in this so much it was so, so great. Overall, this book was just perfect. And I don't know what else to tell you, except read it, please. It's just my new baby now. We're good, we did it. Which also means that this video is over. I'm not sure how long it took me to film this. All I know is that my camera overheated twice, which um, is a great sign. Honestly, great sign. So overall, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to leave a like. And if you want to see more of my content, consider subscribing. And I will see you for the next video that I make. Bye, everybody. And have an awesome day. Now I need to clean this up. Why did I do this again? It's not even that bad. But, okay, I will clean this up now. And I will see you soon. Bye!